Hi guys, welcome to the podcast. Today is September 8th. It is the uh, weekend edition of the uh, podcast. And uh, for the week, stock market uh, rebounded a little bit after a pretty weak August. And uh, you take a look at the, the screen here and you see that the uh, S&P is um, uh, at a point where it has rallied in the past. You know, for the first part of the year, it continued to bounce off of the 50-day moving average, which was kind of the uh, the line in the sand, that was the place where buyers would always step in, you know, which is the blue line here. That was there, here, and here. And then we bounced off of it in June only to fall a little f further. And the 100-day, which is the purple line, became the support. And you can see it's kind of been the support this time. Uh, I think some of the fear that investors are worried about is obviously we're coming into September and there's a lot of talk about the Fed and whether they will taper uh, if so, how much? This is seasonally a weak time of the year for stocks in September. Uh, we've got, obviously, a lot of issues going on with Syria. We have sometime in the middle of October, if nothing's done, uh, we reach our debt limit. And so there's just a lot of things going on in September, and it's, it's uh, not surprising that we're having some volatility. And, and look, we haven't had a lot of volatility all year in the stock market. And I continue to see people that are very complacent in this market. And it's not to say that you shouldn't be putting money to work in certain areas. That's not, not the point. This is not a uh, podcast today about how bearish we should be. Uh, I've actually been buying the last few weeks on this dip. What I'm saying, though, is be prepared because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of a um, lackadaisical type of mentality where, you know, you see what's happened the last few months of this year you know, uh, really all of this year, and you're saying, well, it looks like I should just kind of throw my money into stocks and just call it a day. And uh, while that has worked this year, we know longer term markets aren't typically this smooth. The bond market has been the more volatile of the two markets. The stock market has been the least volatile. That's not usually what happens. And so we may get back to some norm here where stocks are more volatile. And at some level, bonds will reduce volatility and will actually be a uh, smoother ride. But I think the thing people are worried about investors is they see this type of pattern developing. And they say, well, what if we come up just a little bit here and then we roll over? And you know what that would look like would be basically a, uh, a head and shoulders pattern where this is the shoulder, this is the head, and this is the other shoulder. You know, Could that be developing? Absolutely. But if that happens, you know, it doesn't mean that we go down to 1400 necessarily. Just be careful of that. I think a good example of, of something that happened earlier, and I pointed it out earlier this year, is Facebook. You know, it had this head and shoulders. And I said during that time, and I still have those arrows here, that it was setting up for that, which it did. And it drifted lower, continued much lower. And now look at it. So, you know, just because you have a head and shoulders pattern or just because the stock market does sell off doesn't mean that it's completely over. So, you know, we could pull back further and go down to the 200-day moving average, which is the red line. And by then, perhaps we'd be at around 1,600 or so. That's not a major sell-off. So just watch that. But I think a lot of uh, concern out there is because we're seeing things like the Dow Jones uh, and a lot of the stocks in there are exhibiting weak uh, performance. And we'll just run through them quickly. But if you look at companies in the Dow... Uh, you'll notice that you know people believe that, hey, if, if the generals aren't leading the charge, how can the rest of the market do anything? If the Dow Jones isn't, isn't holding up its bargain, how can, we, how can we hold up its end of the deal? How can we move forward as a whole stock market? But if you look at some of these stocks, Hewlett Packard sold off a lot recently. Uh, JP Morgan has sold off a lot. Uh, Alcoa continues to down, be a downdraft, and that's uh, in a downdraft, and that's metals and mining, aluminum a very cyclical company. McDonald's, obviously, it looks like it's rolling over. It has rallied in the last three or four days, but it continues to make lower highs, not higher lows. Caterpillar, it's been a big, interesting one here when you step back and look at it. Uh, this was a stock that was at uh, almost $100 a share. It's now sitting at 83. It's a 17% drop for a big cyclical company. Intel, Actually, it looks pretty good. Just broke out here recently. And uh, just for disclosure, I am long Intel on my aggressive strategy, uh, aggressive growth strategy. So Intel, to me, is a, a good value. I think I like it at these levels that just broke out here, but still has been weak, right, in the last few months. Coca-Cola, weak. Telecoms, remember, they were really strong last, last year, earlier this year. 
they continue to be weak on the lower end. Uh, AT&T has a yield now of almost 5.5%, by the way, if you're into the dividends. 3M looks actually pretty good. Uh, Walt Disney uh, selling off, but may, may be in a good buy spot. But you see, as I'm going down the list here, how many stocks are off of their highs quite a bit and, and looking pretty weak. Um, so, you know, we could go on and on. I think uh, I talked about Exxon in the past. How I mean, look how many red bars there are, how many down days in a row we had in Exxon. Just a tremendous sell-off. Already a cheap stock. But remember, if you look at a stock and you say, well, this stock has a P.E. of 11, like Exxon does, that's cheap. Well, it is cheap. But guess what? If it becomes a P.E. of 9, it just dropped almost 20%. So just because it has a low P.E., it can get lower. Keep that in mind. Uh, how about Walmart? You worried about the economy? You think, well, this is a staple type stock. They shouldn't be affected. Look how it's doing. So it's no wonder that the Dow Jones is now at 14.9, which is still a high level, but is much lower than it was before. So that's a concern for investors. Uh, obviously, there is a uh, concern over the weak jobs report we had. Not only did it miss expectations, not by a lot, but it did miss. But when you look at what happened on, uh, it, it, they also revised down the last two months quite a bit. So we're getting tepid job growth. We know that one out of, only one out of every five jobs is, is full-time. Most of them are part-time. We know that Obamacare is kicking in. Just yesterday, I believe it was IBM sent a letter out to their uh, retirees and future retirees saying, hey, we're going to give you a lump sum here of some money, but we're not going to do life in, uh, health insurance anymore for you because of Obamacare and the rising costs of health insurance. So, you know, we're continuing to see the impact of these things and more regulation and Obamacare on companies, which is trickling down. So and that's a fear. And obviously the jobs is the jobs are growing. Unemployment rates coming down. The market's been satisfied with it. It's not any worse or better. It's been a much slower recovery, we know. But uh, that is a fear when you get revisions down. That's why that headline number sometimes jerks the market one way. They come out and revise it you know, a month later, and it was kind of meaningless. The last two months, numbers were meaningless now because they revised them down. But you can see we came out of the gate, sold off, rallied back, and, uh, and then just trickled down into the close. So I think what we're seeing now overall is a stock market that was oversold down here, but it wasn't so over, as oversold as it was here based on just overall fear, and you just didn't get that capitulation day. We had one 90% down day, which was right in here, where it was pretty much everything was down. It was a really ugly day. And after those, you generally get uh, you know, a, about a week or so where it bounces, and it's kind of a lethargic bounce. And that's really what we've had. We haven't had anything too impressive. There's been some stocks that have been impressive and some sectors that have been impressive, but overall, the stock market has not. Uh, I do think it's got a very good chance of rallying here, but it, it's kind of do or die time. It needs to either rally right now or it could fail very quickly. So I think we'll know within the next few days if we're going lower or not. And again, prepare yourselves for lower potentially because you know we saw on Friday after that week's jo week jobs number, of course, the speculation began, great, this means they're not going to taper. Well, they probably will. And maybe something in the $10 billion variety is what they will do from $85 billion a month to maybe 70 or $75 billion a month and then just go at a slower pace. But I think they're going to do it because you're starting to see the market is starting to price in inflation, and the Fed is obviously worried about inflation. And so they, need, they want to do it sooner rather than later. But the bond market seems to have already priced it in. You have, of course, here's TLT on Friday. Uh, but here's, here's the uh, interest rates. And we're at a technical spot now where they could come to rest. 3% could have been that magic number uh, where, where interest rates turn back around and, and at least come down to more like the 2.5% range. We'll see. I wouldn't bet on it, but a lot of interest-sensitive things are very beaten up and rallied hard on Friday. Utility stocks, REIT stocks, home builders, uh, all those you know, bonds, bond funds, all those things rallied very hard on Friday. And, and again, I don't know... The impact on Syria, we know, we know it's going to be, the impact's going to be with, uh, with oil. Uh, we know that. But what's the impact long-term on the market? I don't think it'll have a long-term impact on the market, obviously, unless we <laughs> enter into World War III. 
Uh, but then that's really when the stock market sold off the other day. It was up a lot. And then once um, it looked like Russia wasn't on board, the stock market sold off. But oil could continue to go up and watch the energy stocks. Uh, that's one of the strongest areas right now. And so watch those uh, stocks, watch oil. But in the long run, what will the impact be on the stock market? I don't think it's going to be a lot. I think the bigger impact is who's the Fed chair, and it looks like it's going to be Larry Summers. At least that's the way the odds are favoring. And what will Ben Bernanke do this month with tapering? Uh, again, I think the Treasury market has priced in some tapering, and so they may start that process. But why do I say that inflation has started to pick up a little bit? Well, inflation in the last few months hasn't picked up so much as the market has priced it in. Uh, things like uh, some of the indicators the Fed watches, for example, the PCE core deflator, it's an inflationary number, that is something that is still heading down and close to 1%. That's not a big concern. Uh, secondly, the velocity of money, how fast money's moving from one person to another uh, is, 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 is at lows. So again, money's in the banking system and the banks have been helped out, but it's not circulating very fast. But why do I say they have, have, have the market has priced it in? Well, if you think about it, you take a look at gold. Okay, Now, yes, it was oversold, could be a technical bounce, but gold looks like a buy the dip right now. And by the way, September is historically the best month for gold, the worst month for stocks. But So look for gold to continue to move higher. It's, it's kind of zigzagging. I think it's, it's a buy the dip right now as it's been doing this, comes down, doing this, comes down. I think it's going to continue to move higher. You're going to see the 50-day moving average is turning up. It's going to cross, uh, cross the 100 pretty soon. So all these moving averages are starting to turn the corner a little bit. And I'm not a big bond bull, but I do own gold. And I think that it's going to continue higher for the foreseeable future, uh, especially during this uncertainty. Uh, remember, there's uncertainty about the Fed. There's uncertainty about Syria. There's a little bit of fear now in the market. The VIX has been rising. Gold does well under those circumstances, but it also does well when there is some inflationary fear, and that has started to pick up a little bit. So we've seen gold rise. Commodities as a whole have risen. The price of tips have risen compared to non-inflation protected bonds. So investors are starting to price in inflation. We'll see if they're right or not, but they're starting to price it in. Now, the other day, you did get a number of, uh, in that jobs report, one of the components was average hourly earnings. And you can see it started to tick up here a little bit. So, you know, this is the one thing that people have said, well, as long as, as, long as yeah, we may have houses going up in price and we may have uh, health care going up in price, but overall, we haven't had a lot of inflation. And that's true. And primarily, it's because look at what the hourly earnings are doing. They have been moving sideways since really 2010. And now you can kind of see the line starting to slope up if you use your imagination here. And obviously, it's the highest level it's been since back in 2011. It did start to turn the corner in summer of 11, and you see it just drop back down. So it could do the same thing. But just keep an eye on that. It's now at 2.2%, which is the highest level it's been at in a couple of years. And if, you know, if we get another higher reading next month, that will be the highest reading since back in 09, and so on and so forth. So we could be seeing the beginnings of that, and the market is starting to price that in. So we'll have more data this week. Of course, every economic report now will be magnified because as if the Fed's just watching, you know, the, the very latest thing. They're taking everything into consideration, but I think they do want to taper sooner than later while they still have a chance to, to keep inflation contained. We'll see if they're able to do that. But it is a sad commentary. You notice how the market reacts. When it looks like the Fed may taper, uh, markets kind of struggle. When it looks like maybe they, they won't, the market rallies. It's as if... We're, it, it's not as if it is true that investors are still addicted to the Fed and really nothing else matters. And, uh, and that's sad. And you can see it in the volume. You can see it in the conviction of what people are buying. Uh, but overall, again, watch this. Is, this is something to watch right here. If we break down through there, you'll see the selling intensify and the 200-day move in average will come into play, which is sub-1600. Uh, the other thing to consider is uh, the fact that at least all these moving average lines are still going in the up direction. You see that they're still moving up. And so as long as that continues, we're still in an uptrend right now. Uh, and this backing and filling and not real intense selling. Remember what's happened here recently is the buyers have basically been on strike. They've taken a break. 
we haven't seen the intense selling pick up yet. And those are the ingredients you need to have a real bear market. We haven't seen that yet. So I don't think we're entering a bear market. I think we're simply, uh, you know, gyrating around here. But we do need to see some, uh, in, you know, intensity on the part of the bulls. Uh, otherwise, we could continue to just to drift lower. But I, I still feel like perhaps we haven't had that capitulation day two, three in a row where you get the, hey, I'm giving up the market so bad, I got to get out. That's what leads to really longer term bottoms. But uh, we haven't had that yet. But, you know, we may not, we may not uh, get that. We may just, get, we may just drift higher, uh, especially if the Fed says something that's fairly dovish. Uh, then you'll see the market uh, move higher. So have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Uh, don't forget, uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Google+. We're on Twitter.com slash Carl Eggers is the handle there. We are on iTunes, EggersCapital.com, and CarlEggers.com, of course. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon.